Hello and welcome to the Failure Fox Minecraft tutorial and playthrough. This set of videos is meant to help people get us, help new players get associated with Minecraft, learn how to do some of the fun little tricks and tips, get started, as well as explain some of the newer things coming out once I get ca caught up to it. Until that point, we will go ahead and focus on just explaining what is currently in the game, as well as helping people get used to the game. Another thing that I will be doing is essentially just playing the world. So do do forgive me if I get off, if a couple of episodes get off track and I just kind of have fun building something. However, before we play Minecraft, we must obtain Minecraft. In order to get Minecraft, you need to grab your uh, favorite little web browser. The current one I'm using is Waterfox, a 64-bit version of a uh, of uh, Firefox and go up to www.minecraft.net. This will take you to Minecraft's official website. Here you can go ahead and buy the game. In order to buy the game, you need an account. So register an account. Once you register your account, I believe you uh, uh, you go to the email, your email after you put in everything in here. And then you tell the you get a uh, message from Minecraft.net that says, "Hey, you have an account. You want to you want to activate it? Click on that. Click on the link provided. You come back and you have an activated account. I already have an account, so I'm going to go ahead and just say sign in. This is helpful for me. And I am in the wrong place. I should be at home. Yay, I'm at home." Now we want to go ahead and go to the store, which is what we were going to first. I have a premium account already. If you do not have a premium account, you basically go through the um, purchasing process of this. You choose a method of payment. Currently supported are Visa, MasterCard, Visa Electron, American Express, blah blah blah, PayPal. So if you have none of these, like if you don't not old enough to have a credit card, you may have a PayPal account. The uh, cost will be $26.95, otherwise known as about $27 in English, in uh, American dollars. In uh, other other uh, countries, there's different prices because of different exchange rates. For instance, it's tw it's uh, 20 euros for a European um, exchange rate, but for us in America, it's $27. Uh, if you were good enough or uh, quick on, quick enough to buy this in beta or even alpha, then you got it real cheap and you still have it. Essentially, you go through the a standard buying process that I'm not going to show you because I am not going to show you my stuff. Over here we have the uh, a recommended uh, setup, and then let's see. Sass on your account to play Minecraft. Once you bought the game, it's yours. No DRM. Yes, I have premium. In fact, I actually have super premium because I got an alpha. But it doesn't matter. Yay! So now you have Minecraft. You have bought it. How do I get it? You will download it over here in Play Minecraft. Now, if you want to just try out Minecraft for a little bit, there is Minecraft Classic, which is an extremely old alpha version that you can play for free. It is the most rudimentary version of creative possible, I believe. Uh, you would want to get the single player, because I believe the multiplayer does not work anymore. Anyway, this is a uh, kind of just a preview thing. The full version of Minecraft is way more robust and much more fun. Now, if you want, you have bought Minecraft, you can either just play it in the browser, which is kind of lame, or download the full file. Downloading the full file will is uh, pretty pretty easily easily done easily done yeah. Windows you have the simplest one as most Windows Windows um, uh, products are. They in, uh, you get a download and uh, installation file rather than have to figure out where to put it. Now if you're not with, if you're not running Windows, well don't don't fret for there is also for Mac OS X. And Linux slash other, which are, I believe are just Unix based. Uh, for Mac, Mac, bleh, Macintosh OS X, you will download the zip file and then unpack and place in the slash applications folder. This is important. And then Linux, unfortunately, I'm unfamiliar with Linux, so you will probably, if you are running Linux, this probably makes a hell of a lot more sense than it does to me. I still have yet to play with Linux, which is 
sad. Sad for me. But from my experience just with Minecraft itself, not really hard to figure that one out. So, download whatever you are, are running. If And uh, of course, if you're new to Minecraft, please ignore the multiplayer server option. What this does is it allows your computer to host a multiplayer server. It, unless you have a pretty pretty beast connection and a pretty beast computer, this is pretty dumb. Or you have everything everything uh, land up, local access network up. You know, everything just connected together. Then this works pretty decent. But again, you still need a pretty beast computer. So we have Minecraft. You have probably install, downloaded, installed your version of Minecraft by the time I have actually finished this sentence. In which case, I have nothing on my desktop. <laughs> In which case, as soon as I pause the recording and fix this, you should, depending on how you installed Minecraft, have a icon on your desktop. If not, easiest way to go to it is find your app data file. Update a folder. Go to dot Minecraft. I believe it's in bin. It's not in bin. I don't know exactly where it is. I have a bunch of a lot of this you probably won't also you also probably will not see. I have something called Buildcraft. Uh well whatever the case. No, not whatever the case. I need to find it now. I s hold on. I'm smarter than I'm smarter than the computer because I can do this. Okay, I put it in a folder called Minecraft because I am crazy. Uh, technically, you can just have it on your desktop. Anyway, I put it in the wrong place. I went to my computer. I put it in a place called Minecraft in Program Files 86. That is not exactly where it needs to go. It should be an update app. It does not really matter. So this is, oh yeah, and this is where I put, first put skin edit. Anyway, uh, your Minecraft.exe is where, what you're going to up. Uh, activate to play Minecraft. Double click on it, or a shortcut to it if you're crazy, and you will, you will be presented with the. Uh, why am I doing that? Anyway, the launcher. This Minecraft launcher gives you a little bit of links to things uh, uh, related to Minecraft, as well as the newest updates. The with today actually, Minecraft 1.1 has update has finally come out, released by Jeb. Not Notch. Notch has retired from developing Minecraft by, or at least heading Minecraft, and Jeb is now the the uh, main updater. Right now, there's going to be scheduled maintenance to on Friday, which means that you won't be able to log in. I do believe you'll be able to be logged in. You won't be able to log in. I'm not entirely sure. In order to access Minecraft, you need to put in your username that you signed up on Minecraft.net, Minecraft's website. And the password. There are also options to force your game to update if you screwed it up like it happens to online. Or find a direct link to your app data, which I actually did not know about. Log in. That little update thing is not very important. We'll talk about it later. Mo Yang, we're in the game! But not just part of the game, we're starting the game. Jason! Sorry. The, with 1.1, there's a few new features that have been added, such as language. If you currently have, if you are, speak a different language natively, then you can go ahead and find your language in here. As it notes though, translations are not 100% accurate, so they probably use some auto-translating things. But there is pirate speak. Canadian English, and English, and English, and English. Anyway, other things here, texture packs. If you have texture packs in your texture pack folder, which I will tell you how to do at a later date, this will be upcome pertinent. Otherwise, it is not necessary. Multiplayer is for logging on to a multiplayer server. If you have a multiplayer server, you can play on that and play with friends. Yes, single player is what we'll be doing later. First, options. You can adjust the sa the um, levels of your sounds, obviously, such as your music sound, your everything else sound, the mouse, mouse sensitivity, inverted mouse, which I highly recommend against, if only just because you need to be rather exact in this game. If you're super, super used to it, then go right ahead. Your field of vision, which to me, I don't think does anything, really. The And the difficulty here. Difficulty is, well, how tough the monsters are, how much damage you take, and so on and so forth. It's 
Sometimes also, um, the variety of monsters, because I believe on hard, you get skeletons riding spiders at once in a while. On peaceful, though, peaceful is very important, or not important, but, um, unique. In peaceful, there are no enemy mobs. In fact, I don't think wolves show up, because they can, uh, you can make them, hit them, and they can become angry at you. Um, additionally, your health regenerates. This is the perfect setting if you just want to play around and build stuff creatively, or if you want to, you know, to, well, not creative, but, but survival, but, and get used to the game and just want to mess around, have some fun screwing with things, or maybe try out some, some new features of Minecraft and see what they work with without having to worry about dying on your master file, your, your main world. And also, I usually will change onto Peaceful when I have something to show off, like I built something single player and I want to show it off on my YouTube channel. I'll make a recording on Peaceful. Easy is easy, very recommended if you're just starting Minecraft because you don't know what you're doing and you have, you know, it's not nearly as, as dangerous on easy. You can still die though, there are still monsters. For the purposes of this play and the tutorials, I will be on normal. Video settings. There are two settings for graphics. Graphics are fast, which are eh, kind of less awesome, and then fancy, which are fancier. It's basically a high and low setting. For the purposes of this game, I will probably be on fast due to the fact that I can't really um, handle um, fancy on my on my if I'm recording directly from my computer. On a multiplayer server, on, ironically and unusually, I can actually handle fancy. Whatever. Render distance is how far away the world will render. Now, if you have a 64-bit computer and you are trying to run far, it may actually give you a message down here that says you are running 32-bit Java on a 64-bit. You should probably be 64. There's a, You can update your Java to 64-bit, and it supposedly will run much better. I haven't tested it yet. I just updated myself up to 64-bit Java and Firefox and all sorts of things. Smooth lighting. This essentially <coughs> allows the um, what's normally a rather blocky light pattern from any light source to be very, very smooth and, and seamless. Uh, if you really, if you don't like the uh, blocky one, then go ahead and keep it on. I kind of jump between the two every once in a while. I like smooth lighting, but at the same time, I like the um, I like to know the exact um, lighting of my room, which is why I have smooth lighting off a lot. Uh, when I'm, or sometimes. Uh, I'll probably have it on, but for the beginning of this game, I'll have it off so you have an idea on how it looks when the lighting is off. And performance is pretty much how how, how heavy the game will run. I don't really know exactly. I, I tend to jump it around because I don't really know exactly what happens because I haven't seen much difference in any of these, uh, any of these for myself. I'm sure that there is a difference, but I don't see it much. 3D and anaglyph. Oh, it doesn't show here, but essentially that is a 3D super super texture. It'll make the game 3D with the uh, blue and, and red glasses type. It's not super advanced, but it does give you a rudimentary 3D effect. It actually does work. View bobbings, where your head kind of go, your screen kind of goes up and down a little bit while you walk. I kind of like it. For uh, if I was doing any big project, it should be off, but I usually forget it. Or a GUI scale, this is your graphical user interface. As you can see, it is pretty much whatever your screen is. I usually have auto because it's just fine. And I can just go ahead and like go like this, and it's going to be automatically, pretty much automatically what it's supposed to be. I'm messing up my screen now. Uh, it resets after uh, you close and open Minecraft anyway. So I could go, what on? And now it's automatic. Uh, let's see, Advanced OpenGL. I have no idea what this is! We should go look it up sometime. Brightness. This is the brightness of your game. I know a lot of people really like it on bright, but when you have it on bright, it's hard to tell how lit up your area, your um, uh, places are, and you can have enemies spawn in there. More on that later. Clouds! Clouds are boss. I love clouds. Particle effects. How many particle effects are in there? Let's go ahead and put it on all and see what happens. Now controls. Controls. One button, or button one, is your left mouse click, unless you invert your, um, 
or you uh, have a left hand mouse, in which case it will uh, you can actually set it to be reversed. Uh, left click is for attack, right click is for using item, and third click, which actually isn't third click, it's your, uh, it's your scroll wheel, that one, that uh, allows you to pick whatever is in your um, hotbar. WSAD, standard mouse and keyboard movement, you know, like first person shooters on a keyboard or an MMO or something. WSAD, pretty much standard. Space is jumping. Left shift is sneak, which we'll talk about eventually. Essentially, if you left sn left click or left, hold down left shift, people on a server cannot see your name, and you will not fall off of platforms if you are walking up to the edge. Additionally, you will hold your place on a ladder instead of automatically falling down. Q is to drop. I is not what you would have. I have it inventory set as I. You will see it originally at E. I have it on I because when the first game first came out, it was I, and I got used to it. My hands actually jumped to I automatically, and E, I just, I accidentally click it all the time, and I don't like it. T is for chat, which I believe only works on servers unless you have a, mod a modified game for server commands, and is essentially how you communicate with other people on the server. Not really difficult. Also, some servers can allow you to have special commands. In which case you would have those. Uh, let's see, tab is listing all the players on the server. Again, on the server. We are pretty much done now. Of course, here's another uh, resource for the uh, language. And then you are ready to play your game. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I have a lot of worlds already done, but we're gonna create a new one. Now creating a world, there's a few things in uh, about creating a world. Uh, I'm gonna call this uh, let's see. Full. No, 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 let's do this smart. Fox tutorial. World. That'll work. Now you have a couple of options here. The world name is just where, what, how to keep track of it. But you have a few other things here. Game mode, survival, or hardcore, or creative. Survival is the basic game. You search for, like it says, search for resources, craft items, get levels for it by killing enemies, which you have health and you have a hunger bar. Um, hardcore mode is basically survival, but you're stuck on hardest difficulty, and if you die, your game is erased. It is, uh, it's essentially something that I would never, ever really want to play myself. But it's a cool feature for some of the people that are actually created things like that. There, it was a, it was basically a user-induced rule back in the day, a hardcore mode, where some people liked the idea where if you died, you, the world's gone because you died. And then there's creative, where you have unlimited resources, you have access to every resource in your inventory, you can fly and you can destroy and place blocks instantaneously. We'll be doing survival. Um, creative mode is fun if you just want to build some neat stuff, but honestly, creative can get rather, uh, rather boring after a while. In fact, that's why I restarted one of my servers, my, or my server once, was we pretty much turned into a creative server and no one really did anything, because they just, it was too easy. Survival, we've got so much stuff that we've built from on, on up. Anyway, other world options, this is important. Seed for the world generator. Now, if you don't know about seeds... Essentially, what this game does is it generates the world uh, as it goes. It, it's just... As it goes. No, 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 no. Dynamically, I think is the word. Uh, procedurally is the actual word. So as you go through the game, it will, uh, you know, explore further. It will actively create world. You don't have, like, a set world. But it, a, a set world that you play around in, the same world as everyone else. It's always unique, except that it is based on a seed. Now, if you put in a specific seed, you can actually generate the same world as someone else. It will generate the exact same way, albeit if um, you update or modify your game or something like that, it will be different. But it will be the same. It just won't be the exact same world as your friends because that's on their computer and this is on your computer. So if you wanted to like both put in an exact same seed, you could actually do that. A couple famous ones are like the 404 Challenge and a few others. 
it's a it's an interesting interesting thing essentially you put in anything for the seed and it'll come out as numbers and the game will essentially build your world on it so if I put it in put in like Foxcraft for my uh, for my seed we'll find out what happens from that I don't really want to because I've done that and the seed is kind of lame so how about let's figure something out real quick we could do we could do something interesting Yay! Generate structures. This allows for villages and dungeons and uh, uh, strongholds to be generated. This is kind of... I, I don't know why you would have this off. The dungeons are, are tiny little things that you only run into once in a while and are actually kind of cool. Villages are neat little things and strongholds are, oh, are pretty bows. I don't know why you wouldn't want that. Now there are... Introduced with 1.1, there are now different types of worlds. There's the default, which is what you would normally play, play the game, and then there's super flat, which is basically, this is intended to be used with creative, where you can just build this giant, um, and, you know, you, the, it's a bit, it's basically the game, um, building a, a layer of, layer of ground as low as physically possible in this game, so that you can build up as high as you want, uh, you know, within limit. And, uh, getting rid of the void fog, which is something that uh, <clears throat> we'll probably eventually come across. Okay, so we're going to go with default. We're going to go ahead and have some fun little seat there and find out what happens, and let's create the world. It'll take a little bit, and depending on your computer, it may take more or less. Uh, my computer's not too uh, powerful, so it's, of course, going to take a little bit. And a little bit more. And here we go. We have a world. Now it's gonna it's gonna take a bit further because it's gotta generate the world now because we've just created ourselves on this spot. And my computer is going, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're doing this to me again. What happened to the last tutorials? And I'll say I got tired. Anyway, so this is the world we will be working with. It's kind of neat, we got a snow biome next to us. And we got a desert, and we got a plains, and we got forest. This is just pretty awesome place. Hey, there's ice down there. And there's pigs. Anyway, for now, I'm going to go ahead and quit this one. But first, let's go ahead and look at a few things. For one, we have achievements. Achievements are essentially a way to just get you pointed in the right direction and know what you're going to do. Like, um, the very first thing you're, you're kind of told to do is open your inventory, go kick a kick a tree's ass and get some wood and then create crafting. This is all stuff that I'm going to go ahead and explain as we go along. But for now, I have to go ahead and quit. Because for, because I need to, first of all, change recording software so that you don't see my desktop out here. And instead, you actually see the game proper and in better quality. Plus, I will have to... Um, it'll make editing for me easier. That's what I want to say. For now, this is it. Goodbye.